chapter 3. The doctrine, oh preacher, oh preacher, you're going to get into the doctrine, are you? You're a doctor. No, I've watched Gunsmoke, yeah. I'm not Dr. Adams on Gunsmoke. But I want you to think about the doctrine of the new birth. The doctrine of the new birth. And as we begin to look at this, I want you to look in John chapter number 3. It's real simple. And people make it so hard the doctrine of the new birth. And when Christ comes back, he's going to take the church out. And when the church goes out, there's going to be a new bunch of preachers coming. And you say, well, who are they? They're going to be 144,000 of them. They're going to be 12,000 out of the 12 tribes of Israel. And they're going to be 12 times 12 is 144. And 12,000 out of each one of them is 144,000. And they're going to be rabbi Jews that are going to be ordained of God to preach the doctrine or the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to the children of Israel. All right, if you would stand with us in honor of the word of God and let me begin reading this morning in John chapter three and I want to read the first five verses if I may, but I want to take the fifth verse this morning, and that will be the topic, and I only have three things that I want to look at today, and I, it's not hard, uh, but I do want you to understand, and I'd love for you to just pay close attention to it. And the Bible says there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, ruler of the Jews, and the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, that means that simply that we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Listen carefully. You must be saved to go to heaven. You must be. I'm reading this from the word of God. This is not Dean Adams' version. This is not Mount Carmel's version. This is the word of the living God. Verse number four. And Nicodemus was a lawyer, a member of the Sanhedrin. He was smart. He was educated. He was well known. And he didn't want people to make fun of him. He didn't want to be seen coming and asking a Hebrew man, a Jewish man, a man that was born out of wedlock. He was born of the Holy Ghost of God but to a woman that was not even married. And here he was coming 
unto him and asked in him questions that he could not understand and he was a lawyer. And Nicodemus said unto him, saith unto him, how can, how, something, he, he had a question. And he said, how can a man be born, or how can, when he is old, can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Text, the doctrine of the new birth. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee. This goes out to everyone sitting in this room. Except a man be born of water, that's washing of the word of God, cleansed through the word. I'm not talking about Dawn dishwashing liquid. And I'm not talking about Tide. I'm not talking about Dial, Irish Spring. I'm not talking about something you buy, that Bed Bath and Beyond. I'm talking about the Word of the Living God. Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit. That's the Holy Ghost of God drawing him through the Word. And of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. You gotta come through the blood. Amen. The blood. Amen. Christ had not gone to the cross, you say. No, he hadn't, but you was talking to the blood right then. He was talking to one that was going to make the way for him to get into heaven. Heavenly Father, and Almighty God, as we bow before you, from the front pew to the back, from the back to the front to the pulpit, Save that precious soul that's lost. Open that heart, God, that must receive the word of God with power, with understanding. Heavenly God, with all power, with strength, with love and mercy. God, we thank you for all that you've done and all you're going to do in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. But anyway, let's get in the Word of God. All right. First of all, let's look at the meaning of the new birth. All right. But uh, here come uh, uh, Nicodemus in. And Nicodemus came in. And when he came in, he said, uh, uh, he came by night. And when he came by night, he came in and he said unto uh, Christ, he came in to him uh, and he told him, uh, he said uh, uh, that uh, he, he wanted to know and uh, just exactly, he said, uh, uh, I know that you're a teacher and you're a teacher that come from God. You're a, he said in verse number two, uh, he said, Rabbi, he said, uh, the same uh, came to Jesus uh, and he said unto him, Rabbi, we know, we know, he, so he had heard of him. He knew uh, who he was and he knew uh, uh, all about him. Uh, but the thing about it, uh, what is, uh, but the meaning of the new birth, I want us to look, number one, uh, what it is not. Uh, it is not baptism. Uh, brother, uh, there's uh, the cult out here, uh, and I'll just call it by name, it's Mormonism. Uh, they believe in baptism. Uh, but I want to show you something uh, in the Word of God in, uh, in uh, 1 Corinthians uh, in chapter number 4 uh, and verse number 15. Uh, and the Word of God says this, uh, and we need to understand this. Uh, in 1 Corinthians uh, in chapter 4 uh, in verse number 15, uh, 
listen to what the Word of God says. Uh, God is trying to tell us something, uh, and He does tell us something. Uh, and He says uh, uh, this. Uh, he says, For though we have 10,000 instructors uh, in Christ, yet have you not uh, many fathers uh, for in Christ Jesus, uh, I have begotten you through the gospel. Uh, wherefore, I beseech you, uh, be ye followers of me. For this cause, uh, I have sent uh, unto you Timotheus, uh, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, uh, who shall bring you into remembrance uh, of my ways, which uh, be in Christ, uh, uh, as I teach uh, everywhere uh, and uh, every church. Uh, so what he is saying, uh, brother, you're saved uh, through the taught and the preached word of God. Uh, he said you've got instructors. Uh, you have got uh, everywhere you go, you've got 10,000 uh, instructors in Christ. Uh, you've got everywhere you go, uh, everywhere you turn, uh, you've got Got somebody uh, that'll tell you this, uh, or somebody will tell you that over yonder. Uh, but brother, uh, you can only get to Christ through the preached word of God. Uh, and also in 1 Corinthians, uh, in chapter number 1 uh, and verses 14, uh, I want you to look. Uh, I thank God that I baptized none of you uh, but Crispus uh, and Gaius. Uh, he said, now look down in verse number 17. Uh, and he said, uh, for Christ sent me not to baptize, uh, but to preach the gospel, uh, not with wisdom of words, uh, lest the cross of Christ uh, should be made of none effect. Uh, all right, uh, brother, uh, it's not the baptism, it's the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, it's not reformation. Uh, well, uh, you, I'll be reformed. Uh, I'll turn over a new leaf. Uh, look what Christ said uh, in John chapter 3 uh, and verse number uh, 3. Uh, look what he said. Jesus said, Verily I say unto ye, uh, except a man be born again, uh, he cannot uh, see the kingdom of uh, God. Uh, look down in verse number 6. Uh, he said, uh, For which uh, that which is born of flesh is flesh, uh, and that which is born of the Spirit uh, is spirit. Uh, brother, uh, it's not changing your mind. Uh, it's not changing uh, the way you're living. Uh, well, uh, I'll tell you, I'll do this. Uh, I'll tell you what it is. Uh, brother, uh, it's getting your mind straight uh, and directed on God. Uh, what we need to do, uh, brother, we need to get into uh, uh, the generation of God. Uh, we need to get our minds straight on Him. Uh, in Second Peter, uh, listen to what the Word of God is telling us. Uh, God is telling us something uh, in chapter 1 uh, and in verse number 4. Uh, Whereby are given unto us uh, exceeding great precious promises uh, that by these uh, you might be partakers uh, of a divine nature uh, having escaped the corruption uh, that is in the world through lust. Uh, brother, I'll tell you right now, uh, when your nature changed, uh, I'll tell you, uh, you'll get your mind changed uh, when your nature changed uh, and also uh, in first Peter uh, just back up uh, and look in verse uh, chapter number uh, 1 uh, and in verse number 23 uh, being born again not of corruptible seed uh, but of incorruptible uh, by the word of God uh, which liveth uh, and abideth forever uh, for all flesh is his grace uh, and all glory of man as a flower of grace. Uh, grace uh, withereth uh, and the flower fadeth away, uh, but the word of the Lord endureth forever. Uh, and this is the word which by the gospel uh, 
is preached unto you. Uh, brother, uh, it takes the preached word of God uh, to get you saved. Uh, brother, by the word of God uh, and by the blood of the Lamb of God, uh, that's what gets you saved. Uh, that's what gets you turned around. Uh, that's what gets your mind uh, uh, what the word ought to be. Uh, though sin uh, and through sin, uh, man's spirit came uh, into the condition uh, of spiritual death. Uh, brother, uh, that's what happened uh, when Adam, uh, brother, he uh, spiritually, uh, he was alive uh, and he was uh, doing well. Uh, but brother, when sin entered, uh, brother, he died spiritually. Uh, but the thing about it, uh, in regeneration, uh, man is quickened uh, out of the spiritual uh, separation. Uh, and uh, I'll tell you then, uh, his spiritual life and union and communion with God uh, is restored. Uh, brother, when you get saved, uh, and uh, I want to tell you this, uh, the resurrection uh, is the restoration of life uh, and of that which life uh, has, uh, brother, uh, been restored, uh, then you are restored uh, into uh, eternal life through the blood uh, of the Lamb of God. Uh, I'm talking about uh, a spiritual uh, translation uh, in Colossians, uh, uh, brother, in the Word of God, uh, in chapter 1 uh, and in verse number uh, 13, listen to what the Word of God says. Uh, brother, it's plain uh, and it's simple. Uh, brother, if we'll just let the Word of God speak to us uh, and, and brother, uh, talk to us. Uh, and then it says uh, in uh, verse chapter 1, uh, he said, Who hath delivered us uh, from the power of darkness uh, and hath translated us uh, into the kingdom uh, of his dear son? Uh, now right now, uh, listen to this, in whom uh, we have uh, a redemption through his blood, uh, even uh, the forgiveness of sins. Uh, aren't you glad uh, that the blood of the Lamb of God uh, will wash away all our sins? Uh, I'm glad, thank God, uh, that God don't leave a dirty spot. Uh, that God don't leave uh, just a few sins uh, or just a little bit of sin over here. Uh, brother, like the Sunday school lesson saying, uh, brother, uh, when we uh, look down that river, uh, when we look down there, uh, brother, we don't see uh, a nothing down there. We might see our boys down there, uh, but brother, we don't see no sin. Uh, we don't see no uh, nothing, no dirty things down that river of life. Uh, brother, there's nothing down there uh, but a pure white stream. Uh, I'm glad, thank God, uh, when God washed me out, uh, he cleaned me out. Uh, he cleaned me up, uh, brother, and he brought me out of a life of sin uh, and he cleaned me up uh, and he set me glory uh, on a solid rock, uh, brother, and made me a fit candidate for glory. Brother, and old Nicodemus, uh, he was at the cross uh, and claimed the body of the Lamb of God. Brother, what was he? Therefore, he was regenerated. He had a spiritual creation in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, what am I talking about? I'm talking about in Ephesians uh, in chapter 2 uh, and in verse number 10. Listen to what it says. Uh, he said, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Brother, when you get right with God, church ain't a problem. Sin ain't a problem. Not only that, the necessity of the new birth. Because of the inability that which belongs to one kingdom or order to enter in another of itself don't hinder you. 
Did you know that? Let me go over that again. Because of inability of that which belongs to one kingdom or order to enter another by itself is not a problem. Listen, in, in John, what am I saying? In, our, in, our, in John chapter 3, look at verse 3 again. Verily I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Look down in verse 7 now. He said, marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. What is God saying here? God is saying because a man, because a man's condition is a man's condition of spiritual death. Man, man, because he said, marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. You must die to the world. You must die spiritual. I'm talking about the doctrine of the new birth. Brother, you must die spiritually to the world. And in Ephesians chapter 2, in verse number 6, listen to what the word, the Bible says. And, ha and hath raised us up together to make us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. God has made us, raised us together to sit together in heavenly places. God has raised us up because of man's condition of spiritual death. Man, because, listen, because the, it's necessary that you be born again. God can't sit down in the trash with you. God can't sit down in a sinful place with you. God is holy, and he said to be ye holy as I am holy. God is a holy God and God, God is not coming down to where you are. You got to come up to where He is. And the only way that you can come to where He is is through the blood of the Lamb of God. Through the new birth. Through the new birth. And last, but certainly not least, the old nature is not, not, for it's not, it's, it's not acceptable by God. I mean, the, the old nature, you can't, it's got to be eradicated. It's got to be got rid of. It's got to be, oh, preacher. And I've heard this, and God has heard it till he's up to here. Well, God understands my situation. God knows that I'm a weak Christian. Well, God knows that I have to have a little drink of liquor and a little beer every evening. And God knows that, uh, uh, and me and my wife's got to understand, and I run around a little bit on her, and she runs around a little bit on me, and uh, well, that, that's the way we've got an understanding. Hogwash. You're some kind of a fool. I'll tell you right now. You need to be drug up the creek instead of down the creek with one leg. And after a while, you'll get tired of the rocks and you'll holler stop. The thing about it is, even a Christian has two natures. Amen. You still got that old nature. Now, God, God uh, listen, 
God did not take out that old Adamic nature. You've still got that old sinful nature. Dwayne, you've still got a temper. And if you think that Dwayne Jones ain't got a temper, come back here and kick him on the leg. What about Jerry Laws? Come back here and lay the foot to him. Smack one jaw, smack the other jaw, and see if he don't smack your jaw. Amen, Sammy? I mean, you can, you can knock a man down long enough and he's going to put you on the floor if ain't much of a man about him. God even said that. He said, a man that will not provide for his family is worse than an infidel. And an infidel is a non-believer. A man that don't work, he don't eat. I mean, a man that won't provide for his family. Hey, brother, what has what God said? He said there's two natures there. You've still got that old atomic nature. You get mad, you fly off of the handle, but you got to put it. Take an act off of the end of that handle. A lot of people say, I forgive you but they leave that old hatchet on the end of it and every time you get mad, you start chopping away again. Think about this. Every Christian has two natures, that old nature and that new nature. And I'm gonna quit, all right? But the thing about the theory that one can have a second experience in which that old atomic nature is completely removed is both contrary, it's contrary to scripture and human, human observation. You can't, listen, you're saved one time for all eternity. But you still got that old Adam nature. You've got to put that old Adam nature aside. You've got to lay it aside. You got, Paul said that, that I would do, I don't do. What I used to hate, now I love. Now I love what I used to hate. I used to hate God. I used to hate Christians. I used to kill Christians. But now I pray to God that every one of them gets saved. Now I love them all. I preach the word of God to them. I love them. I pray for them. I, I used to hate church, but now I go to church. I look forward to it. Brother, now, Fred, Fred you didn't always go to church. I was his pastor for about what? seven, eight years. And now he's pastor again. Thank God. But the thing about it is, what are we talking about? Brother, we ain't always love church. Brother, it takes the love of God in here before it can get out here. How do you get the love of God? You got him up here and you know, you're not ashamed of him before the church. The doctrine of the new birth, uh, expressing God before the world. Not ashamed. Nicodemus came by night and said, what must I do to be saved? How, how can a man be old uh, enter into his mother's womb and be born again? You can't. Uh, he said, uh, brother, you must be born uh, of the water uh, and the spirit. Uh, brother, then Nicodemus at the cross said, I claim him. I claim the Lamb of God. I want the body of the Lamb of God. And him, Joseph of Arimathea, they buried him. But they didn't bury 
They laid a body that in three days, glory, 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 the devil the first day said, I got him. The second day, they said, I got him. The third day, thank God, hey, they said, all hell is said, I'm a t- something's happening, I'm a losing him. He's coming out, he's coming out. Oh, glory to God, the devil couldn't hold him. Woo, glory, hallelujah. He's alive this morning. Why? Because he is God Almighty. Brother, he's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. He is, uh, he is God Almighty forever. Brother, what I am talking about. Brother, listen. In 1 Corinthians... In chapter number 9 and verse number 27, listen to what the Bible says, if I can find it. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse number 27. Listen to what the Bible says. The Bible says this. Chapter 9, verse 27. But I keep my body This is Paul, the murderer, the scoundrel, the heathen, the one that killed Christians that met the Lamb of God on the Damascus Road. But I keep my body and bring it under unto subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, This is Dean Adams too. I myself should be a castaway. See, God holds me accountable to what I preach to you. Can I read it again? But I keep my body. I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Uh Uh-huh. See, I've got to live what I preach to you. A preacher stand up here and preach a lie, Buddy, I'll tell you right now, God could smack him like swatting a dog or a fly. Oh, buddy, you better be careful how you... Yes, I'm a Christian. You know what that means? Christ-like. How many Christians we got in here? That's lived like Christ this week. How many Christians? That's live just like Christ. Oh, dear God. Paul said that he had a struggle with the flesh. Oh, I got to bring it under subjection. But I mean, I, I have a problem. My wife knows I got a temper. But I wouldn't have an axe or a knife that didn't have temper. There's a place for it. There's a place for it. But you hurt one of my family, you'll find out who's got a temper. The reason why so many church members have no spiritual appetite, and I'm done, if they'll get a song, They endure only for a short time. Listen carefully to me. Listen carefully, carefully, carefully. Listen, listen to me, please. Please give me your attention. I'm I'm reading one sentence. The reason why so many church members, I said church members, not Christians, Church members, 
And I'm going to put Christians in there. I should have put, should have put Christians in there too. Have no spiritual appetite. They endure only for a short time and then drop out. And are whirly in uh, impulse. And desire is the lack of a new birth. It's a lack. The church member is a, has a lack, has a need of new birth. A church member is not always saved. Since I've been a pastor here in the last, so, matter of fact, this month, 14 years, How many members, how many people come up here and join this church? But they're gone. They're gone. IRS don't even know where they're at. Got saved, joined the church, and gone. Like a covey of quail. Why? It wasn't a new birth. It was just a new experience. Just come up here and said, yeah, we joined the church. We want to join your church. Our family wants to be buried here and all of this. But the thing about it is, if they don't show up in two years, their name's gone. <laughs> they didn't check into that. So I ain't seen them in probably 12 years. <laughs> but the thing about it is this. It wasn't the new birth. It was just an experience. Yeah. It's just something to do at the moment because somebody else came. Their neighbor came. The one that came with them came. Their mother came. Their daughter came. Their son came. Their best friend came to the altar that day. Friend, the Holy Ghost of God must draw you to this altar. Amen. And when the Holy Spirit of God draws you, it'll be real. That's the doctrine of the new birth. Christ told Nicodemus the word, the washing of the word and the spirit the word, the preached word of God, the word of God says, you're saved by the foolishness of preaching. To the world, preaching is foolishness. And after a while, the preaching is foolishness to a lot of people. I'm not going to church. That's foolishness set up for 30, 45 minutes, 30 minutes. I try not to hold nobody over 30 minutes. And the thing about it is, they'll say, it's, it's stupid, it's stupid to go up on set for 30 minutes. Man, we can go fishing, we can go, we can do anything, we can sleep. Sunday's my day off. Yeah. That boy killed Samuel Bullard. Sam. He dated my son-in-law's niece. He's sitting in a jail cell for God only knows how many years. Don't you think he'd really wish he hadn't done that? Don't you really think? Not only grief for, for him, and God knows I feel sorry for that young man. I really feel sorry for him. My heart goes out to his family. All the grief he's caused. 
the Samuel's family. But what about Samuel's girlfriend's family? Now what about the Samuel's sister's and brother's family? What about to Samuel's mom and daddy? What about to Samuel's daddy's brothers and Samuel's mother and her sisters and brothers? And it goes on and on and on and ripples. Look, look at the ripples on both sides, both sides. And look at all of his friends and loved ones. And you look what happened at the grief here in the county. But not only him. Look at all the people coming into our county selling drugs and making drugs. They're looking at dollar signs. Now they're wanting to legalize marijuana. They're looking at dollar, but look at our little children, our grandchildren, that's eating this stuff like candy. Their little minds are warped. Look at the families that are hurt. Look at the ripples. Look at the ripples that go out. You're not hurting one person. All the money is soon gone. But then you're caught. What good's all the money? What good? The Word of God, God is so smart. He said, there's pleasure in sin for a season. But see, the eternity, all oh, in eternity, there is pleasure forever and ever and ever and ever. Let's stand, Heavenly Father. And Almighty God, touch hearts today. Oh, the doctrine of the new birth. What a blessing. What a blessing, Lord. What a blessing. Oh, the blood of Jesus. What a blessing. What a blessing, Lord, you have given us. Lord, help us live under your blessings. Oh God, if there's one or more here today, Lord, that needs that blessing, Lord, that needs that strength, Lord, that needs that love, that needs that push, Lord, today, let them come in Jesus' name. Amen.